Welcome to the Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Immersive Aircraft. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make all sorts of aircraft and their compatibility with Create. Welcome to Immersive Aircraft, where I'm going to show you how to make a lot of these as well as use them, upgrade them, and potentially have them compatible with Create. There are several mods involved in this actually working properly. But once you have all of them together, as well as a data pack or two, you should be able to really have a great immersive experience and have a lovely add-on for your Create mod. So the Immersive Aircraft mod adds in five aircraft of varying types, from simple to complex, as well as fast to, well, at least versatile. None of them are actually poor. They're all extremely useful in their own right. The recipes that I'm going to be showing you in this video have been modified by the data pack, but that should give you at least an idea of what it is that these things may cost you. If you're doing it without the data pack, your recipes may vary, and they may also look slightly different, but they should be similar in at least their cost. To start with, your gyrodyne. Or gyrodyne, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, but this one here doesn't actually require any fuel. Any of the others will. So this one is a really good one to start with, especially if you're resource poor, though you will have to have progressed into create a little bit at least. You'll need to make some things like a large propeller, which is simply just another propeller with extra sheets attached, large sails, which is just a bunch more sails, hull in order to have, well, something to sit around, or at least to contain the vessel in, which of also is made from simple materials, a seat, of course, and a precision mechanism. If you're familiar with Create at all, then you should know that this will just be a little bit of a process. You'll have to run a golden sheet through a cogwheel, a large cogwheel, and an iron nugget being deployed on some sort of uh, conveyor or at least a series five times to make yourself a precision mechanism. Now there is a chance that it might not also work. It's an 80% chance that it will work and a 20% chance that you'll just get random salvage, which means you'd have to start over again, but the, at least the materials aren't exactly that expensive. Keep in mind, you are making some kind of airplane here, so it's not going to be extremely easy, but I do feel that these are relatively simple recipes as it is. So as I've mentioned the gyrodyne, we're going to start with introducing you to the flight, the different items, upgrades, and mechanics. This here is a gyrodyne. It is a pushable helicopter. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is you'll have to push it in order for it to actually get up enough speed for it to propel you. And yes, it, it is just a, a helicopter blade on a stick attached to a seat with some wings uh, in, a, in a sled. But still, just keep in mind that it's Minecraft and this stuff is fun. So once I right click, I mount this just like I would any kind of cable car or something like that. But it says here at the bottom, 0% power, keep pushing. And I see a lot of wrenches. What that means is the wrenches is the durability that's left of this vehicle. So if I get out of the vehicle, which actually that changes, pressing sneak does not get you out of the vehicle. That helps you to usually go up, down, or throttle down, depending on the vehicle that you're choosing. In this case, you'll want to press the letter R on your keyboard. That should actually help you to get out. But once you are in it and you press E to open your inventory, you'll instead open up the Gyrodyne's inventory. And this is the same for any of the other vehicles. And you'll notice that it has several different slots. Now this can change on the depending on the vehicle as well. In this case, you've got a weapon slot and upgrade slots. Let's start with the uh, weapon slots. These are relatively simple, and some of them work better in some vehicles than they do in others. So don't think that these are just like useless in all uh, aspects. But for instance, if I put a, a telescope in here, that is actually a, one of the weapons. This is just a spyglass with a, a copper ingot for a mount. But you can also add in things like heavy crossbow, bomb bay, or rotary cannon. These are going to be a little bit more to work with. You need some like a tr uh, crossbow, tripwire hook, and a bit, of, a bit of wood for the crossbow. Um, but it's not always as cool as you might think because it actually follows some measure of realism for how those function. Uh, the bomb bay, of course, is going to be using something along the lines of TNT. Uh, the heavy crossbow here is going to use things like the air arrows. Uh, the rotary cannon is going to use gunpowder. And um, the, don't worry about the firework rockets. That's for the biplane later on. 
But as I was saying, the telescope, a bulkier version of the spyglass. If I'm here and I press right click, I will zoom in and I can look around. It's pretty darn cool. It's actually mounted on the back here, but the reason for that is because if you're flying this thing and uh, you use a spyglass, you'll just start like zooming in and it would be in front of you blocking your vision. And that actually is the case with some of these vehicles. So the spy, this is not, not necessarily uh, that practical on some of them, but it does give you a, a way of looking around. Now in this case, uh, I'm actually going to take it off just to give you an idea how you can just upgrade things. That's all you do. You just drop those in there. It's that simple. But if you want to get going on here, all you have to do is press forward until it says that you have enough power. Then you can just press the space bar and you lift off. It's 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 that simple. And you are now in the sky on a, on, on a Giradine and it will fly infinitely. It's pretty cool that way. <laughs> um, so this is a really great one. It also has its own internal storage and three upgrade slots as well as the weapon slot. But you'll notice I'm not moving anything but the airplane is moving itself slightly because it has a, a wind effect to it that can sometimes make your precision flights and flybys um, less so. So let's start looking at more of these upgrades because we've got three different slots. We've got plenty of items to choose from. That's pretty much any of these that we've got here uh, in industrial gears. If there is a fuel requirement, this is a really good one to put in there to reduce the cost of that. But as there isn't one for a gyrodyne, it's pretty much useless. A reinforced hull. This is great <laughs> for making early on, uh, especially if you're not familiar with the plane and you want to uh, understand how, to, how it works. You probably want to use one of those temporarily at least until you can get the hang of it. Otherwise, you may end up destroying your uh, ship a little too easily. For example, if I press sneak to go down, uh, and of course you press spacebar to go back up, but if I press sneak to go down and I just hold it down, bam, it, it did a little bit of damage on my, uh, my gyrodyne. You can see one of the uh, little wrenches actually turned kind of a darker gray, and the reinforced hull actually makes damage uh, much less so. It, you keep the same amount of little wrenches down there, but you uh, damage them half as much. So that, that's kind of how that works. But um, that was actually a very light landing. Some of the other ones can take some serious damage if you like clip a tree or you run into some fire or something along those lines. Or uh, even better yet, you just start punching it and oops, uh oh, uh, the thing ends up breaking. Well, you, you definitely don't want that to happen. Don't worry, it, it won't just disappear. Usually they'll drop parts or pieces, any kind of upgrades and stuff if they do end up expiring or taking too much damage. For example, I'm in survival mode now and I'm punching it a whole bunch. You'll start noticing that as I'm punching it, little flame particles start showing up, meaning that it is badly damaged. So when I try right clicking on it, if I'm not mounted in it, I'll start repairing it automatically. It does not require any kind of extra material and this can really be a lifesaver. So if you start noticing that your ship is a little bit um, beaten up, then be sure that uh, you have a little bit of space that you can stop so that you can fix it. But that aside, let's talk more about some of these uh, different upgrades. Improve landing gear, plus 50% takeoff speed. This is not going to be as useful uh, as one might think. It didn't really make much difference to me for uh, the the distance that I would have to push this before I could take off, but it might lessen a little bit for you. It's really, really useful for the biplane, not so much for this one, but there's no reason why you couldn't put it in there and make it. it it's relatively simple. It just requires mechanical belt and some iron. Next to that, we've got the gyroscope, which is really good on a Gyrodyne, it's good for just about any of them. So you notice how I'm kind of swaying a little bit. You'll notice the background is just like ever so slightly moving now and again. It pretty much just eliminates that. You put that in place and boop, suddenly everything locks in place. It gives me a little bit of stabilizing and eliminates any kind of wind that is uh, kind of slowly pushing me around. So now I have ultimate control, or at least uh, you'd like to think so. At least you're not being pushed around as much. By the way, the gyroscope, is an electron tube with a compass. So there is a little bit to that one, but it's not too bad considering how big of a, a benefit it can give you. But I'm not going quite as fast or as efficiently as I could be. That's where a brass propeller comes in. Now a brass propeller is just some brass on top of a regular propeller, uh, but it does reduce your air friction by 75%. Now in my experience, 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is used for specifically, but it does seem to make you go a little bit faster through things and maneuver a little bit better. It just seems like everything is a little bit nicer uh, in general. So perhaps that is what it is in this case. I can't be 100% sure. I didn't find enough information on it, and so I just experimented myself. But it is really nice to have it in there nonetheless. It just gives me that much uh, extra control and speed that I do like. So let's move on to the different engine upgrades. Now these can fit in any of these different slots. You can actually, I, I think you can even combine them together. Yeah, and, and get double their benefit if you really want to go that crazy. But if you want to go simple and straightforward with no drawbacks, sturdy pipes. Just straight up 10% extra engine power, but that just makes you go faster. That's pretty much it, which can be really useful for something like the biplane. Uh, again, <laughs> or uh, it, just so that you can uh, get uh, up and off the ground a little bit faster. It, we'll get to the biplane in a moment, but the other ones move relatively slowly. The uh, This one moves pretty quick in my experience for uh, how fast it goes, but the other ones each have their own uses. And I, I, again, I will cover those shortly. We're just going over all the upgrades and stuff, and then we can uh, kind of jump into that other bit. So besides just going with a straight up 10% engine power, let's let's put this back in there. I can't take the, the ship moving. Uh, we're going to go and look at the steel boiler. Now this increases your engine power, which is more or less your how fast you can go, by 25%. But it does increase any fuel requirement by 50%. Now for something like a gyrodyne, this is great because there's no fuel requirement. So it's just straight up faster and better than sturdy pipes because you don't have a fuel requirement. But there's also other things like the lava engine, which gives you a 40% engine power increase instead of the 25. If you really want to, you can, as I was saying, you can just start popping in a whole bunch of these and get yourself some really crazy movement. Nonetheless, there was one other engine, that's the water engine. So if you're having problems with fuel, these things are just chunking through the fuel. Let's say you're not using a gyrodyne, you're using any of the other vehicles, uh, and you want to cut down on the fuel consumption, this is your number one go-to. It does cut your engine power down, but it also reduces your fuel requirement by 75%, which is really huge when you compare it to uh, some of the other options that you might have. Like the industrial gears, that's just a 20% fuel requirement reduction, and that takes up a whole slot. This one is, well, more than three times that, though it does reduce the engine power. You can always boost that back up with something else. So we looked at the telescope already and how it pretty much just lets you zoom in if you really want to. But there are other things like crossbows. Uh, now, I do also have different weapons. You will want uh, arrows along with the crossbow. And you'll notice that there's now a little crossbow on the front of the vehicle. And it will pretty much shoot wherever the this thing is aiming at. So you're gonna wanna be aware that when you're going forward, you'll notice, like, look at the, uh, the, the pitch of this vehicle, at least I believe that's what it's called, where this thing rocks back and forth. You'll notice that when I shoot, I can shoot really high up or really low, depending upon how I have this aiming. So you are probably going to want to be very aware of uh, how your ship is currently kind of aimed so that you can better target what it is you're trying to hit. In this case, I've just got some dummies set up here and you can see there we go. I just I'm doing six points of damage straight up. Now there are other options as well. I've got the bomb bay, which is rather dangerous. Uh, that will require TNT. Uh, it does drop TNT, but it won't destroy blocks. Now the other thing is it will destroy things or at least knock them off uh, like picture frames and such such like that uh, as you might experience. But all you do is get above your target, right click, and you'll drop some little TNT down on the ground and it's quite damaging. You, If you are too close with your vehicle in this case, you will blow up your vehicle and it will be game over man. Bombay aside, let's look at the rotary cannon. And just for reference, that Bombay is just TNT with some iron ingots. Now the rotary cannon, this one here, um, it can be quite nice, in fact. You'll notice that it's on the back there, and it pretty much will just shoot where I, I want it to, but it's not going to unless I give it some kind of ammunition. There we go, and it goes through ammunition relatively all right. You, you heard that there was more than one shot fired, and it only used up the one gunpowder but uh, you are going to want to make sure that you can actually aim at your targets. It's a little bit more challenging to try and hit them sometimes. As you can see here, I'm not 
It doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but to be honest, I am. I'm doing five points of damage every time that I'm hitting these dummies. It just doesn't have a lot of kickback to it, and you can use it just about anywhere. You just, it, it's really effective. So now that we've kind of uh, covered the Girodyne, we're going to cover some of the other vehicles here while I land this. Ooh, not too, not too hard. I don't want to end up destroying the darn thing. One way of landing if you have a hovering vehicle is to get close to the ground, then press R twice. You'll jump out and it will slowly gloat down or float down to the ground without taking any further damage that you might have already incurred perhaps in flight. Then again, of course, you just right click until it's fully repaired. Next, we're going to cover this little guy, the quadricopter. This is really cool. I like the quadricopter quite a bit because it flies differently than the others. You notice when I look, it automatically rotates. This is the big difference from a lot of the other ones. Some of the other ones you'll have to use your uh, A and D or left and right keys depending on how you play uh, in order to kind of turn. In this one it's just wherever you look is how it will turn but it's also a helicopter and requires fuel of sorts. Only has one upgrade, only has one weapon slot. I'm pressing uh, the spacebar to take off and nothing is happening because I need stuff in the fuel container here. So let's put some charcoal in there. It'll take any burnable. You can even put sticks in there if you want. Uh, but by holding spacebar, I take off and I can see I can strafe left and right. I can also turn very quick and easy. So I can turn one direction. I can turn and do stuff. It's, it's very maneuverable. Um, and then, of course, you can always put something like, you know, let's make this thing go a bit faster and put in a lava engine and it'll give you that much more oomph so that you're not just kind of like creeping along as much like you uh, might otherwise. But just about any of these can be really nice for the upgrades. None of them are really bad. Uh, but I do find that if you really want to just make this one last longest, you probably want to go for either a water engine or the industrial gears just to cut the fuel cost down on it. Because it, it's not a fast moving thing no matter what you do. Uh, it only has one upgrade slot so you can't exactly do much with that. It does have a few extra slots that you can use, but only six. And then again, it's really easy to land. There is no vertical movement required. Uh, and then you just press R to hop out. And of course, you just right click again to repair if needed. And to give you an idea, with that Gyrodyne uh, just needing a precision mechanism, your quadricopter is going to need a basic engine. Uh, which, of course, they're only going to get worse from here uh, as far as difficulty. But you will need a fluid tank, which is a barrel and some copper sheets, as well as a steam engine, which is a gold sheet and a side alloy block of copper, and a blaze burner. If you're not familiar with that, well, an empty blaze burner is just iron sheets around nether rack. But the blaze burner itself, you have to take an empty one and click on either a blaze or a blaze spawner in order to populate it. And then that will create the blaze burner that you need to make a basic engine. And yeah, as this says, the quadricopter, it's perfect for building, and that's about it. But uh, you can use it to get around quite nicely if you really want to. Sometimes uh, Minecraft modded, Minecraft specifically, the terrain can be a bit foreboding. But this is excellent if you have a really tall, perched uh, base and you, you need a, a method of getting up and down. So let's now cover the airship and the cargo airship. These are very similar recipes. One is just uh, going to be an upgrade of the other. So it's slow but it's easy to maneuver, has lots of different slots and stuff, and you will need to do a mechanical crafting uh, operation in order to make one of these. It's going to require several sails, some string, the seat, a bunch of hulls, propeller, and an advanced engine. The advanced engine is the precision mechanism from that Girodyne, plus a basic engine that I just showed you from the quadricopter. But it also is going to need some sturdy sheets on the side, which is a bit of lava being infused into powdered obsidian, which of course was crushed uh, by, by some crushing wheels, and then stamped a, a few times uh, running down the line to make the sturdy sheets. Yeah, there's a bit to it, but honestly, the airship is pretty darn cool. It has a bunch of new options, and you'll also notice that it has like this one little engine here. That one has like three. Well, let me show you the difference between the, the airship and the cargo airship, at least in the, the recipes. The cargo airship just requires one more hull and four more chests. So that's something to think about when I'm showing you the differences on here. So the uh, regular airship here has three upgrade slots, just like the Girodyne, one weapon slot, just like the Girodyne, but it also has a die slot and a banner slot. So you can actually do something like uh, a die here and 
you can change the uh, the colors on the sides uh, and you can also add in like a banner and make it kind of you know like this i tried adding in some banners you see like in the far right there there's like some mischief of mice banners i tried putting something like that in there it didn't really accept them it just wanted the general banner color and in this case um there you go this one here, um, the upgrades, uh, it, well, one, it, it stores twice as much uh, as the others at the very least. So it's just nice for that. It's a good um, all around movement one. I know that they all have space for two people. I forgot to mention that. And of course, you've got the same pluses and minuses with the weapons, um, but this is where it gets difficult. If I put the telescope on the front here, uh, you'll notice it's actually in the front of the vehicle. And when I look through it, I'm, I'm actually looking at the telescope with the telescope. Um, it's kind of awkward. Uh, you can use it for around it, but as soon as you get to right in front of you, it's just in the way. So I recommend not using the telescope on this one at the very least. All you need to do for this one is just hold spacebar and you take off. And then you just aim forward and you can use your uh, left and right uh, keys or a and D as you'd like. It's pretty simple. And you can look around with your uh, mouse. It's it's a very straightforward build and design, very functional, uh, and allows you the use of a weapon if you want. And then of course you just press uh, sneak in order to kind of get your vehicle lined up. There we go. Now let's talk about the difference here with this one, the cargo airship. I think you already see the difference. <laughs> It's got everything the same in the middle, but it's got four extra large slots to work with. So once again, you can customize the outside look of it, at least with a couple different colors, um, depending on what you want. You can also fill it with fuel. And in this case, just by holding spacebar, I then take off and it just functions in exactly the same way as the other one did. It's really nice, uh, very convenient when you're going on the really big loot runs. So just keep that in mind, especially with it being able to hover. I think that's like one of the nicest things uh, on these ones is that when they can hover, you can then just drop in between some trees. But when they can't, uh, it makes things a little bit more difficult. But if you really wanted to make yourself an immersive mod pack or something, and this is like one of the only ways of flight, then I don't see why not. It's really cool and a lot of fun. The biplane. This one here is going to require large sails, some hull, a seat of some sort, a large propeller, and an advanced engine, which I already showed you on. That one is a little bit expensive. Now this is also rather tricky to fly. So much so that I moved the Girodyne out of the way. Let me uh, kind of press a little bit here and just get this into place. So the biplane is rather unique. It can go a lot faster than any of the other uh, vehicles that I've shown you so far. It does not have the ability to hover, though you could feasibly land it pretty accurately on the spot. It's the takeoff that you really need to worry about. And you'll see uh, what I mean in this case. I'll do a few takeoffs and landings because that is really where things can get a bit confusing and difficult to work with. So let's start off with the simple stuff. It does not have any space for die, but it does have spot for a banner. So you can actually put something on there and it will kind of color the wings a little bit in that way. So maybe you can at least differentiate your, your plane from someone else's if they're running around. Um, the uh, rest of these work really nice. I do recommend that the bomb bay probably is one of the better things because you're moving so fast that the crossbow and the cannon are going to be really difficult to target things with. Um, the telescope could be useful as well just to kind of see around because it does, if I'm not mistaken, mount behind you again, which is nice so that you're, you're not being blocked. But again, the plane itself is, is rather large and bulky and difficult to look over. So not necessarily as nice as one might have liked. Anyway, let's put on some of these regular upgrades. Oh, you know what? Maybe we don't. Let's just hold off, put some fuel in here, and show you what it's like before I do any kind of upgrades on this. So this one's going to be very different. Your shift is going to actually throttle down. Your spacebar is going to throttle up. And what that means is you're going to increase the engine output or decrease the engine output. So you will need to keep this in mind because when you press W and S in order to go uh, forwards and backwards, it's going to be uh, like flight stick rules. So by holding down the space bar and I'm pressing the S key right now, I will start going up. There we go. As soon as I'm able to. 
and then I can start leveling off and flying around. And you can see about how far that was before I ended up going, maybe like half that uh, flight strip. So it's not like I can go very well with uh, the um, like hovering ones can fly around and just land on the spot. This one here, I might have a little difficulty taking back off again. Um, but you can still add in some extra upgrades. And in this case, that improved landing gear definitely helps out with uh, reducing your amount of space needed for uh, takeoff. Not a lot, but it does definitely help considerably. And then of course the stabilizing is just going to make sure that wherever you fly you can do it so much simpler and easier. Plus it's got these lovely wing, uh, like wind uh, decorations going on that kind of like drag the wind as you're flying around. It, it's quite lovely to use the biplane. But let's uh, add in some air friction there, or reduction, which is definitely going to help me to get better control of the airplane. And you can always add in extra stuff on there. But again, it's it's just fun to fly around with this one because it's also so fast to work with. And this isn't even including any kind of engine upgrade that is currently on here. But let's not overlook that there's a new option, the firework rockets. Uh oh, I've gone flying way too far. Let's bring this back a little bit. And then I'm pressing the B key in this case, which you might need to change it in yours. But you'll notice that there's a little trail now and I'm going even faster. Oh, it's, it's actually a little bit difficult to keep up because I'm going way too fast in this case. So let's add in some bomb bays. We'll add in some TNT. And then maybe we can do like a little flyby of these uh, guys over here. And you won't just drop one. You'll actually drop two at a time. And I reduced my flight speed by just holding down the shift there long enough that I could get a good flyby run, which is pretty darn cool. I, I do like using this one a lot. It's a little bit more uh, realistic. And you can also, if you really want to, just kind of like land really gently if you try to yes a uh, very uh perfect landing in my mind yes this is exactly how i had intended it um that i, I don't want to hear anything negative from you guys <laughs> so but you can see just by holding the sneak key uh, the engine reduces holding the space bar it increases and starts pulling the the airplane along it's just that simple. Again, just remember to pull back when you're taking off with your biplane and not press forward like some of the other ones, like the Girodyne. That one's kind of the reverse. There you have it. I hope you really enjoyed this bit by bit. I know that I have. It's a really lovely air flight simulation or convenience mod. Uh, plus, adding in that data pack that makes it very much create mod compatible is just fantastic. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more videos of this nature, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, don't be afraid to stop, stop by and visit us on Twitch. We uh, stream there quite regularly. Until next time, folks, I'll see you.